Hello physics students. Today we're going to talk about scalars and vectors. These are two different quantities used in mathematics and physics and it's really important to understand the differences between them. The goal for today is to identify the differences between scalars and vectors. We're going to talk about a very particular type of vector called displacement which will lead us to a different vector called velocity. First things first, a scalar has something called magnitude and that's all it has. The magnitude allows us to say how big the number is. A vector on the other hand has both a magnitude and a direction where the magnitude again is the bigness of the number. Looking a little bit closer at a scalar and coming up with some examples, I can say I went for a five mile run. If I were to have said instead that I went for a 10 mile run, I would have given us a scalar with twice the magnitude. I could also say that my mass is 74 kilograms. That's all the information I need to give you for you to understand that particular scalar. I could say that Takaru Kobayashi can eat 50 hot dogs in 12 minutes. That statement has two different scalar quantities in it. If we look at vectors, which we said have magnitude and direction, I could say, for example, the duck is 200 meters to the west. And I've identified both the size of the number, 200 meters, and I've identified the direction, west. Competitive free divers can swim straight down over 350 feet. The wind is blowing at seven miles per hour from the southeast. So if we look at a few different terms that we have, we can see these scalar quantities, time, I think everybody's familiar with that. Distance is how far away you are from a particular other location, perhaps the origin. Speed is something that says how fast we travel, but it is a scalar quantity. If I want to write an equation for speed, I can say speed is equal to distance divided by time. If I want to look at some vectors, I can say I have a displacement. A displacement is a type of distance in a sense, but it has a direction associated with it. So if I want to give an accurate displacement, I have to include both the magnitude and the direction. Velocity is similar to speed, except it is also a vector, so it must be accompanied with a direction. If I want to use an equation to calculate velocity, I can say velocity is displacement divided by time. As a quick aside, let's look at this little letter here. This is the capital letter delta from the Greek alphabet. It's a triangle. We use it a lot. It means change in and it always means the final minus the initial. So for example, if I said delta t, that means the change in time, which could be written as delta t equals t final minus t initial. This allows us to write those same two equations we had before, but in a little bit more of a mathematical way. If I said s, the speed, is equal to delta d over delta t, that's accurate, but understand that I must be using a distance in the numerator there. If I wanted to get a vector quantity, I could say velocity is delta d over delta t, but this time the numerator must be the displacement vector. The displacement vector and the velocity vector will have a shared direction. Let's look at an example where I can go on a jog. On this jog, I have the option of going around a square path where each length of the side of the square is one mile. I'm going to start from my little greenhouse here. I'm going to make up the number that it takes me eight minutes to travel from start to finish as I'm showing here. So I've traveled just a distance of one mile. I can use the equation that we identified earlier and say the distance divided by that time could give me a speed of 0 0.125 miles per minute. The displacement is very similar to the distance except that it now has a direction associated with it. So I can say the displacement was one mile to the east. If I wanted to look at how fast I was traveling, this time I'm able to talk about the velocity. It has the shared same direction as the displacement, so my velocity was to the east, and it also happens to have the same magnitude as the speed did. Let's go to another example. In this example, I'm going to start at my house. I'm going to travel a mile to the east, then I'm going to go north for a mile, then I'm going to turn back and go west for one mile. 
let's say that I was traveling at the same rate and so that means that it took 24 minutes for me to do this run. I traveled a distance of three miles and I have my speed there which was again 0 0.125 miles per minute. If we look at my vector quantity, my displacement says that I am now one mile to the north and that means that if I use my equation for velocity, which is displacement divided by time, I get this number that the velocity is equal to 0 0.042 miles per minute, also to the north. If we want to look at why these two numbers are different, it has to do with one being a scalar and one being a vector. My displacement says that I am now one mile to the north, and that means that if I use my equation for velocity, which is displacement divided by time, I get this number that the velocity is equal to 0 0.042 miles per minute, also to the north. If we want to look at why these two numbers are different, it has to do with one being a scalar and one being a vector. The vector quantities only care about the initial and final positions. So my displacement was actually only one mile away from where I started, one mile to the north to be specific. Since my velocity uses displacement in the equation, it also, in a sense, only cares about the initial and final positions. Let's look at a third example. In this example, I start at the little greenhouse and I go all the way around this particular block. I'm going to say that I have to go a little bit slower this time. It takes me 40 minutes and I recommend that you pause right now and you try to figure out what my different quantities are going to be. So the quantities for speed, the distance, the displacement, and the velocity. Alright, let's see how we did here. If I want to look at the distance and the speed, that's pretty easy. My distance is four miles. I go all the way around the square. I can take my four miles divided by 40 minutes and get 0.1 miles per minute. If I look at what I have now for my vectors, I see that I have a displacement of zero miles because I started and finished at the exact same location. You'll notice I didn't actually add a direction to this one because if the magnitude is zero, it's kind of meaningless to talk about what the direction of it was. If I'm going to calculate velocity, I need to use displacement. And since I had a displacement of zero, my velocity is now zero miles divided by 40 minutes, which still comes out to be zero. Let's recap the important topics from today. We talked about a scalar quantity that only has magnitude. We have a few different scalars that we talked about specifically today. Speed, distance, time. We also have vectors. There are a lot of different types of vectors and they're very important in physics. The ones that we talked about today were the displacement vector and the velocity vector. You should note that anytime I have a vector, in this case displacement, that's being modified by a scalar, in this case time, I always get another vector out of the equation. This would be the velocity vector that I'm showing here. Just remember, a vector has both magnitude and direction. Let your screen know if you got it all figured out.